Welcome back to MacBrick Studio. Continuing our exploration of Motion 5.2 and all of the awesome things you can do with the 3D Tile Tool, you're gonna to take us on a different trajectory today. Yeah. Logos, we can actually create logos yeah. in Motion. This is gonna blow your mind. Logo Motion, that used Lo to be- Logo a, Motion. It used to be a, like an app, didn't it? Or anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but th this is great because we're going to take the whole idea of 3D. I mean, one thing, first thing that came to my mind is, wow, I want to make a 3D logo with all this. And it's like, well, you can. It takes a few hoops to jump through, but it's totally worth it. So I want to show you a way that you can do that. The basic idea is 3D works on, I should say 3D text works on fonts. Right. So in order for a logo to become 3D in Motion or Final Cut, this will work in either app, uh, you need to make your logo into a font. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to show you how to do that, yeah. So here I am in Illustrator. It can be any vector program. And I have the Ripple training logo in Illustrator. And because it was, it was created in that, this happened to be created in a vector application. So I'm going to use the direct selection tool just to select all the paths that make up that logo. And we can see they're all selected there. I'm going to press Command-C to copy. And I'm done with Illustrator. Done. Okay, yeah. You just copy the paths. That's I all you do. I just want the paths. The vectors. You copy yeah. the vectors. And the vectors, yes. yes. So now I'm going to go to this application called Type Tool. It's called Type Tool 3. And there's many uh, apps that will create fonts for you. This may not be the best. It's the one I found that works well, and it's only about 49 bucks. And it's a very, very deep app, and I know very little of it. <laughs> just enough to turn a logo into yes. a exactly. font. Exactly, exactly. I've, <laughs> I've learned just enough. So I'm going to go to the File menu and choose New. And it's basically designed that you can create a, uh, you know, a, a font across every single glyph. And we're not going to use all these. Usually you open every single one. All, all I'm going to do is go to the, the letter A here. Underscore A. Or the small A. Small A, yeah. Yeah. And double click it. And you have to double click it twice. I don't know why. That's one of the aspects of the program. that I, It's a mystery of the program. And it brings up this glyph window. I'm going to hit Command V to paste the Ripple logo Ooh, into there. Look at the vector. There it is. Course, yes. Yeah. Now it's a little small. So I'm going to use this transformation panel click on the scale and type 200, click on uniform and apply. Okay, that's a, sort of a pretty standard transformation you would do in most programs. I'm just gonna drag it to center it. It doesn't need to be perfectly centered at all, but it's just nice to get it about where you want it to be. Now, you might think we're done, but one thing that you have to watch out for are open paths. Because if you think about it, if this thing is going to be extruded, it needs kind of closed objects to extrude. The ripples under the R are open paths. Yeah, yeah. So how could it, how could it extrude that? It's, it's kind of it would be confusing. So what we can do is if we select those two paths, let's do that to select them. Oh, I don't want the R. Thank right you. There. Thank you. Let's see if that'll do it. There you go. Now I've still got a little part of the R bound there. Um, what I'm going to do is go to the contour menu and choose to close open contours. Now, there's many, you could fix these in Illustrator, you could delete them, you could redesign them. What but I'm, it basically gonna take that, rip those curves and make a closed yeah. shape from them. Yeah, so I'll click that, and it makes a closed shape. It's got a little extra piece I don't really like, so I'm gonna click on this part down here and hit delete, just to delete this little path here. Okay, so I'll delete that little path. So now we have closed paths to work with, okay? So now at this point, we're really done. You have to do a couple of steps in terms of saving this font, and then you want to choose generate font once you've saved the font, okay? And I won't go, the, our tutorial has all the details, but I'm telling you enough that you can figure it out and how to get done. So you're going to choose generate font, and that creates a new font. You save that file, you double click it to install it in Fontbook, and I'll show you in Fontbook that if we go down to Ripple, of course, I've already done it here. So I go down to Ripple, and I have a lot of different things in here. I was experimenting, so <laughs> you, you, it looks like kind of a mess, but the key thing is Ripple is there as A. That's all I really care about. Right, you could have just done the R, too, without the circle or the close. Yes, yeah, I've done a couple versions of it in here, you can see. So if I go to Motion now, this is what's kind of cool. So I'll hit T for the text tool, I'll click in here, and I'll type a small letter A, okay? And I'll hit Escape. Now, by default, it just looks like a letter A, Let's make it a little bigger because I don't have the right font selected. Of course. So if I go down to our newly installed Ripple font, of course, you'll need to close and reopen Motion if you do this for it to see the font. So I'll go all the way down to the R's, and there's Ripple, and there it is. There it is. Okay, there it is, because that's the letter A with a Ripple font. So now it's a 3D text object, so we can enable 3D text in the Appearance tab of the Text Inspector increase the depth, and add any kind of material to it to make it look uh, in 
way cool ways, you know, um, a lot of Plus camera. Metal, yeah. And you could, of course, break it into multiple materials, which I won't do here, but uh, there we have- That's a ripple coin. A beautiful ripple coin, <laughs> right. awesome. Isn't that great? Yeah. So, and now you can include that, because I'm working in motion, I can incorporate that into a full 3D scene with lights and shadows and reflections and all that kind of stuff. Or you can do it in Final Cut and just have a 3D logo. So there in a very short few steps is how you can take any logo that was created in a vector app and make it 3D in motion. <laughs> you know we're gonna start seeing tons of logos turn into oh, yeah. 3D. Yeah, everywhere. It's right? like, mm, <laughs> interesting, lots of 3D logos yeah. everywhere. Awesome, that's a great, great tip. So of course you're gonna need uh, Illustrator and uh, the Text Tool Type Pro. Tool, yeah, right. or, or maybe there's, I think there's other vector apps around you can try right. Right, as well. Excellent, but the fact is you can do it. Yep. So thanks, Mark. Um, you wanna check out his training because he, he goes into a lot more depth uh, in particulars um, that you'll wanna know. And uh, you'll want to also check out his plugins. He's got some really nice ones. And he, he took a lot of what he knew, uh, what he learned in motion, and he applied them to his really awesome um, 3D plugins. Plugins well. for Final Cut. Yeah, plugins for Final Cut on fxfactory.com. So thanks for watching another episode of MacBreak Studio. We'll see you next time.